Dead Man's Fingers Pineapple is so much better than Plantation Stiggins Fancy Pineapple Rum. Believe it or not, that is a statement I get week in, week out, whether it's off the back of live streams, whether it's off the back of other videos that I've done. People are really passionate about their pineapple rums, and it's probably one of the most requested videos that I do. Now, this video has been in the planning stages now for a good eight weeks or so. I started planning this at Christmas. I'm shooting this mid-February. The whole per the whole point uh, of why I kind of delayed it and delayed it was because I thought this was actually dropping at Christmas time. Uh, this is uh, Two Swallows new, brand new pineapple rum, brand new at the time of shooting this. Uh, so I was holding on and holding on for that. Um, otherwise, I was pretty much good to go. Now this video did start off as a four-way comparison, Lidl and Audi uh, versus Dead Man's Fingers versus that. That's what I was going for, but it just kind of grew and grew and grew and grew. Now I just want to add something in from my own personal viewpoint here and I think a lot of people will appreciate and be on the same wavelength for me. I'm still not overly convinced up until, let's be honest, up until uh, even last night this was still not going to be included in this video because I don't think personally it belongs in this video. For me the best way I can describe this different to these guys and I don't know, I haven't done the research about Two Drifters yet, the pineapple uh, spice rum. I know a lot about that one, but I don't know that one. But the big difference, the way I can describe it to you, this is a pineapple rum for rum lovers. Don't know the dosage on that, how much sugar is added, but it will be minimal. But the point being, this is actually made with pineapples. I can never remember the right way round for this, but you can flip it up either way. Either the skin is um, macerated with the OD and then the flesh is macerated with the uh, three stars and then it's blended together or it's the other way around. The skin is with the three stars and the flesh is with the OD but that's blended. But that's how that's come. It's natural pineapple flavoured. It's a pineapple rum for rum lovers. The difference with the majority of these, you might have to exclude that. I don't know. I haven't done the research but the difference with the rest of these, these are pineapple flavoured rums where I'm not expecting the rum to be the most prominent flavour of them. They, some of them will be naturally flavoured um, using a, a, a flavouring that has come directly from a, a pineapple. Others, so not pineapple, but a flavouring compound that has been made using pineapple. Others will be artificially flavoured, where they've carried lots of different E numbers together to create a pineapple flavouring. Nothing, none of these should compare to that. This, I say it again, is a pineapple rum for rum lovers. But purely for my own curiosity, I want to see, A, can I, I hope, hopefully I can pick it, but I want to see whether I can pick it neat, and then actually how does it stand up? Because I get both markets, I get, if you want a pineapple flavoured rum and coke, or a pineapple flavoured daiquiri for instance, you probably won't pick that, because it is not an out and out vibrant pineapple flavoured product, whereas these are. So if you want an out and out pineapple forward drink, you probably wouldn't pick that. But if you're a rum lover that just wants a subtle twist of pineapple, that is pretty much your go-to. So as I say, this started off with four products. It just grew, more and more got added. I wasn't going to include the overproofs in this. You've got a 60% of there from Devon, two drifters. You've got a 65% of there from there. But I thought if I'm including that, why not include that? Let's just see how the overproofs really compare. Because at the end of the day, yes, they are stronger, but you can add less to your drinks to make it sort of similar ABV, therefore becoming more cost effective. So for example, if you take uh, the 70 CLs, 25 mil shots, you've got 28 shots in a bottle of that. For example, they are sort of 35s, 40% ABVs. This being 60%, you almost get, if you're doing like for like, you almost get kind of like 40 shots out of that bottle. So yes, while it is more expensive, it actually goes a little bit further if you use it the same way. And then just the last note on these two at the end, I wasn't going to include them, but I thought, do you know what? They're here. Why not? The whole reason I wasn't going to include them is because they are a combination of flavours. Like the Duppy Share is pineapple, cola nut and Caribbean spices, for instance. Uh, Nathana Club Spiced is um, guava, coconut and pineapple. So they're not out and out pineapple rums, but people would kind of associate them in that category. Now, I have got 13 here and this is going to be the biggest rum video I have ever done. But this video, quite simply, this video could have been 22. Here's a list of others that I just, I would have had to buy and I thought that's just getting a bit silly now to do that. But there's other brands here. Uh, push, uh, pull the pin, 
uh, Twin Fin from Tarquin's Gin Company uh, down in Cornwall. We've got Cadu, Jamaica Cove, Arcanist, which is a brand new brand. Uh, Nelson's, which is again a phenomenal brand, but again, more aimed at rum lovers. Uh, we've got Tiki Lovers and we've got Koyaba um, Scorched Pineapple, I think it is. I think that's what they're called. And then there is one final caveat. Uh, Bush have also sent me their rums down here. I've got three of their um, spiced rums down here from Bush. Now, I've not opened this. I don't know what the flavours are and I'm going to be doing this in a live show, uh, I think actually next week at the time shooting. I, again, I haven't done the research in this because I, I like just to do off the, literally just to open and go with it on the live streams. Uh, and that's what these rums are for. This just says tropical citrus. So I, I'm not thinking that this is an out and out pineapple rum. Uh, it could be, we shall find out in a couple of weeks when I do it on a live stream, but for now, I'm not including it. So how is this monster of a video gonna work? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rearrange these in a second in price order. We're gonna do the price comparison. I'm gonna have a neat sipping uh, comparison. Whew. Uh, I'm going to be doing the Coke because pineapple rum and Coke is a biggie. I'm going to be doing ginger ale because pineapple and ginger is a biggie as well. And then I'm going to be doing a daiquiri. But as there's a lot here and glasses at a premium, I'm instead of doing it in one big tasting session, I'm going to be breaking this down into four different tasting sessions, having a little break, having a couple of biscuits maybe, uh, and then go move on to the next one. And again, I'm still without Mummy Barman. I'm shooting on this on the same day as I did the uh, White Rum Trinidad video. Mummy Barman is out. I will have a good swap up uh, with there. It worked quite well in the last video, but this is going to be me on my own doing a blind tasting. So the first uh, test is the price comparison and just rearranging these. I've, it's the first time I've done this. I'm automatically shocked by two specific things. Uh, as I stated, yes, these are the overproofs. So these will go a lot further because I'm not expecting you to do a double shot uh, like for like, as you probably would do these. They will they will go a lot further. So their price is down there. But the two ones that have got me straight away, what the flipping hell is old Jay doing all the way up there being a 35 percenter as well? Why? Why is that up there at that price? And then Dead Man's Fingers right in the middle. Why are all these, okay, those brands, why are those cheaper than Dead Man's Fingers? Now, as I always do, uh, and always say shop around, probably you would get these maybe cheaper off Amazon, maybe in supermarkets as well. I just go purely as a logged out price on Master of Malt. So anyone in the UK can order these on these prices uh, without a doubt. So except for these two, these are supermarket brands. So let's start at the bottom end. We've got Aldi and Lidl, $14.99 there. Uh, both of those 30, 37.5% ABV. Then we come on to Master of Malt's own brand, Project 172. Uh, it's a, it's a, again, it's a division of Atom Labs, Atom Brands, the same as like the Boutique, different sort of companies, but they are parent owned by Atom Brand, which is Master of Malt effectively. Uh, 1995, a bit more expensive, um, bearing in mind that's a 50 CL as well. So actually price wise, that's gonna sit roughly here, uh, but bottle price, 1995. Then we go up to Havana Cuban Spice, 21.45. Red Leg, uh, 21.49, so pretty much identical there. Uh, Langs, uh, 21.95, so again, 50p splitting those. Dead Man's Fingers, 21.90. And again, when I do this, see this in supermarkets, it's roughly about 22. Uh, so I'm not sure you're going to get that much cheaper. You may on offer it be about 20. But I'm in my head, you know, knowing what I know about red leg and that, why is red leg, why is red leg cheaper than that? I don't know. Um, brand new uh, entry point uh, for this, 23.25 is a 50 CL. Uh, so again, if you're going to do shop price for shop price, then yes, this is going to sort of sit up at this end. Probably not actually move up one to be fair. Um, sit up there. We've got Duppy Share at twenty three ninety nine. So again, about seventy five piece splitting these two. This is the out and out shocker. Um, where it was? Sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing here. Uh, where is it? I've lost it already. Old Jay, twenty eight pounds ninety five. Twenty eight pounds and ninety five pence. Almost. This is going to be the big comparison. Almost double the price of Aldi and Lidl. £28.95. Not one you often see in supermarkets, so you're pretty much going online for that. And then we get to our big three. So Plantation Stiggins Fancy, 32 I should remember that, 32 99 for Stiggins Fancy. <coughs> Again, 32 99 for the Pineapple Grenade, 65% ABV. Get a lot more bang for your buck, even as it is a small one. 
and then the brand new one to me, Two Drifters 39.95. As I said in the previous video, they are a UK distillery distilling this from scratch. You have to give them some leeway because they are never ever going to be able to produce a 20, 25 pound products purely because they haven't got the buying power. They're a small company. They need to hit their margins. So you have to give UK distillers the leeway now. Yes, we've got UK brands, but UK distillers making from scratch, you have to give them that price leeway. Right, so the neat tasting. Now, this is impossible to rank. So I've kind of loosely grouped them together uh, of ones I really liked, uh, ones that were okay, really, really decent, ones that I kind of like, yeah, and one that I wouldn't have neat again I just wouldn't touch it again um, just in clarification for this excuse me call oh, the gas I'm really sorry you guys know me by now but one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and thirteen okay so number one number two number three number four number five number six you can see seven is DMF eight is the new Hursties two swallows Number nine, Duppy Share. Number 10, Old J. Number 11, Plantation Stiggins Fancy. Uh, number 12, uh, Pineapple um, uh, Grenade. In full disclosure, if you think, hang on, it's not open that yet, I've still got a little bit on the back of the bar, so I've used that bottle, all right? And then number 13 is the two drifters. Now, it is very easy to pick out <laughs> the two strong ones. Those, very, very easy. Which order they are, though, I don't know. I, the, fir the very first one I picked up was properly strong, and I put down has to be um, has to be two swallows, has to be the bomb. Um, sorry, yeah, the bomb, the rock star, the bomb, um, because of those caramel vibes on there. But I did get a bit further down, and it was the where is it? Uh, da -da -da -da, I've forgotten which one it was now. Where's it gone? Uh, number eight, the eighth one I tasted was actually. Uh, even kind of even more caramelly. Okay, so my preference out of those two was the first one that I had uh, because that's actually, you get past the burn, that was actually really nice. So I'm going to do this by now. So the two strong ones first, my preference out of the two strong ones uh, is the first one, number third. Wow, uh, two swallows is my preference over that. That's just lovely, really like that. Didn't dislike, obviously, you know me, I don't dislike this at all, but uh, number 12. I just thought the two swallows pipped that. Yes, more expensive, but that is absolutely delicious. Now, I uh, think I've left these in the right order. These were my two standout, and I'll be brutally honest, if that is not Plantation Three Stars, then I'm just going to stop this video. Plant up, what am I calling it? Plantation Stiggins Fancy, sorry. If that is not Stiggins Fancy, um, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to give up this channel because that is the only run there. Um, but th yeah, they're strong, but that is the only rum. Um, it's still got lovely pineapple forward notes to it, but that is the only rum. So I'm pretty much hoping and guessing that this should be number 11. Oh, yeah, <laughs> look at that. You could just tell it apart, a, a, a mile apart. I absolutely enjoy drinking that neat. There's no, there's no sweet cloyness. There's nothing artificial about it. It's just a lovely drink to sip neat. Now, so, okay, so I'm happy with that. Uh, this was my standout one. Now, uh, the rest of these have got that little bit of sweetness to them. Uh, you can tell that some are very kind of artificial. Some are meh. Some have got a little bit of spice to them. Some haven't. There's two there that are quite watery. This, for me, was the one that kind of thought, I'll be honest, it's a little bit thicker and a little bit sweeter, but it's got the one... Um, not sweeter than some of these. It's probably sweeter out of a two or three of these. But it's the one that's got the most behind it where A, I would drink it neat. But B, I think it's got the potential for mixing. Uh, so this would be my top pick, really, out of the rest. So uh, I don't know what this is. Uh, number eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, Wow. Congratulations, Mr. Hurst. You can tell it's just got like, something extra. What is it? Is it? It's pineapple and salted caramel. It's that. I think it's that. You can smell it on the nose, to be fair. It's just got that like, little something extra about it. That's really, really nice. I, I do like that. As I say, a little bit. Comparing those two, no. Uh, you're you're going to go for the plantation neat every single day of the week because that is just glorious to sip neat. But that's quite enjoyable. 
if you have a sweeter tooth and you want something a bit extra. So the next category I'm going to break down, I put these all level. Uh, these are perfectly decent, uh, nothing to write home about, but put pineapple forward, um, just the, the Ron seal just is, does exactly what you expect it to. Pineapple forward. I'm not saying rum, but a pineapple forward spirit drink, essentially. All right. So uh, equal. I can't. This if, if we're saying. Well, yeah, I, whatever. Equal next category down. So number two, Lidl. OK, Lidl, pineapple. Number two there. Brilliant. Uh, number. Oh, number one, Casario. Nice. Do like that. That's a good 14.99 bottles. They're good shouts. Uh, number nine, I can tell my nines from my sixes. That's really easy. Number nine, Duffy Share. Good shout. Kind of like that. Uh, and then the, the other one in this is number 10. That has to be next to it. Okay, old Jay. Um, again, uh, what did I put for that? Uh, nice, pleasant, not too sweet, uh, decent, does the job. That's kind of what I wrote down there. Um, so happy with those. Um, right, the next batch, I was kind of like... I wouldn't recommend these at all, to be honest. Quite syrupy, quite thick. I would, in my not so knowledgeable palette, I would say that these are probably the more artificial ones out of the bunch. I don't know. It's just how that taste comes across. Um, they're all right. I just wouldn't buy them again. So uh, that is number six. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's Lang's. Okay, Lang's pineapple there. Uh, let's go for this one. Number seven, Dead Man's Fingers. Number seven there. Uh, let's go for this one. Number three, Project 173, Master of Malt's own one. It, it, they're just thick as syrup. I think these are probably, hang on, let me do this one. And number five, one, two, three, four, five. Red Leg, all right? Uh, so I'm not sure what we've come on to. I don't know what I'm missing now, but number four, Havana. The Havana Cuban Spiced. I put for this one, watery, meh, uh, weird aftertaste. And now I really appreciate what that weird aftertaste is because it's kind of like guava, toasted coconut. Um, I get that completely now. It's not, when you're tasting that, it's probably not a fair one to have in here because it's nothing even remotely close to being anything like that. So it's probably an unfair disadvantage. But if I wanted a pineapple rum, I wouldn't point you in the direction of Havana. Now, the point, I'm, a point I have to make here before I go into the next stage, which would be the Coke, I've got a funny feeling there's going to be some role reversals here now because we all know that sugar makes things taste better. Um, and I, I've said it time and time again, some of the sweeter, more cloying spiced rums do really work well and open out well in mixes. So I'm really expecting... Uh, some of these to actually play an even bigger role uh, with the Coke and the ginger. Well, right, so the next taste test we've done, we've done the pineapple rum and Coke. I just added uh, Coke to all the glasses, the same amount. Here's where the caveat is coming because these two <laughs> needed a little bit of extra Coke. So it's pretty safe to say uh, which ones these are. But once opened out, uh, I'll come on to those in this. Actually, I'll start off with those. Um, once you've opened them out, I flavor-wise, they are phenomenal. And I would probably put them, flavor-wise, I would probably put them up here. So what I've effectively done, I've got four groups here. Um, so one, two, three, and the, the overproofs, essentially. These are the ones that I really, really loved. And I've got three at the front, which I um, would kind of put ahead of the next two, just minute slightly. So effectively, you could say there's four, five groups, essentially. They're my stars. I like them. These are really, really tasty. Uh, these were okay. Uh, these were, mm, do you know what? If I've, I've tasted those, I, I wouldn't really bother with those. If I'd had them without tasting those, they're all right. They're, you know, they're fine. But having tasted those, uh, there's better. Now these. Now, the overproofs. I much, I enjoyed this one uh, better more, I should say, than this one. This one's just got all kinds of flavours going on. It's absolutely lovely. But you do need that extra bit of coat. So that's what I mean. These are more expensive. They are stronger, but they go a lot further, if you know what I mean. So, uh, I, think, I think I have to say, being brutally honest, I think I have to say, once you open these out, these are my favourites um, because of the flavour. 
that's coming there. You just need less of it or more mixer, one of the two. But I have to say, they are my favorites. Even, and that might be a bit of biasness because I know what they are. But flavor-wise, where you've got the kind of all the different notes flying around there, they are really enjoyable drinks. So my, my favorite one out of the two, number 12, well, it's 13, so that has to be Rockstar. Uh, and then number 13 uh, in that. Minimal between them, I would still put those two ahead of all the rest by a long way. You just need to open them out more with Coke, uh, with more mixer, essentially, because they are stronger. So so that that's that's my caveat there. Right, let's do the three at the front. So these are my top picks of the lower ABVs, if you like. So um, number 11, plant, wow, plantation. There we go, plantation. Uh, number eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Two swallows, uh, the pineapple, that's up there. Uh, and then number three, well, wow, Project 173, that's in there. So, wow, that's why I said, didn't I? I said there's potential for them to come out of play because a little bit of extra sweetness kind of makes a more rounded drink. Right, okay. These are not far off though, really, really not far off. You're gonna be really super happy with these, whatever these are. <laughs> number two, Lidl. <laughs> Number one, Aldi. <laughs> right, okay. So better that the, these are better. So what do we say? Plantation, the two swallows, and the what was that one? The one seven three. For me, better. For me personally, better. But you know, a fifteen quid a bottle. You know, that's that's decent. They are better than these. So right, my next group. Um. So how I'm basically categorizing this, if I've tasted these, they knock spots off them. If I haven't tasted these, these are pretty decent. All right, that's the best way I can describe that. So um, number, that's my, that's a number six for me. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Langs, okay. Uh, number five, Red Leg. And then number 10, is that Old J? Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, Old J is in there. Decent group, okay. DMF hasn't come out to play yet, sorry. So these three, as I say, perfectly okay, absolutely fine, they're, they're not horrible, but having had those, they are a lot better than those. Having had these, they are a lot better than those, which are a lot better than those. So these are a level above, two levels above these, um, but still decent. You're still going to have a decent pineapple rum and coke, if you like, using these. They're just better. Simple as that. So what have we got? Uh, number seven, DMF. And we've got number four, Havana, Cuban Spiced, which leaves number nine, Duppy, Duppy Share. Okay. So, wow, some shocks there. A plant, plantation's holding its own note. I thought this might get lost. I thought this might be a bit unfair to include it, but it's really holding its own so far. Right, so the next taste testing we're doing is the ginger ale. I've used uh, Schweppes um, Ginger Ale Canada Dry uh, for this. You could have gone ginger beer, but I, I kind of prefer the ginger. Now, uh, caveat before we start again, I just like to be open and honest about what I did uh, when pouring these out, I kept these two separate and then doubled the amount of mixer that I added to these. And then what I tried to do while tasting, when I jumbled them up, what I tried to do was A, not look, but the angle I've got up here, I can't see the levels here. So I'm hoping that I've just purely judged this on taste because they would have opened out a little bit more. Um, so that might be, I don't know whether I should have done that for the Coke, I don't know, um, but that's kind of that. All I will say, I've got four, again, four distinct groups here now. Uh, these six up the top here, absolutely loved. Couldn't split them. They're all different. They've all got different things going on, but really, really like them. Um, again, when, when I'm doing it, you know, it's kind of what I say. When I want this, I want something. If I want a pineapple and ginger, I want to taste pineapple and ginger. I don't want to be like, eh, it's all right. It's a little bit subtle and all that. I want pineapple and ginger. That's what I get from those. Uh, next group down, 
perfectly happy with those as as i say if i hadn't tasted those i'd be well happy with those but the fact is they're better than them um then i've got the next group of three down here these they're just simply not as good as those two and then these two at the bottom here um they were kind of like mm -hmm, yeah okay the, i can tell it's just that sort of um, for me it's kind of like that fake kind of pineapple it's, it's not as clean crisp as as what these are up here so um I don't know what they are. I'm not saying they are artificial. The plantation might be down there for all I know. I don't know. They're just like meh compared to these. So uh, let's go with the top six uh, to start off with. Can't split them. They're just lovely. Different. They're just lovely. So um, number two, Lidl. Uh, number 12. Wow. Okay. So interesting. Number 12, uh, uh, the Rockstar Pineapple Grenade diluted down so you can probably see there's a little bit uh, more and yeah it's like double the amount in there look that's kind of interesting so when you dilute that down nice um number one casario aldi essentially uh number eight uh oh that's the other one there nice hersties two swallows nice 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 uh number 11 eight nine ten plantation it's flipping old in its own, isn't it? It is. Wow. And then number 13, two drifters. There we go. So what I say, add a little bit extra. They go, they're more expensive, but they go a long way. And they're just, uh, you know, if, when you dilute them down even more, they just come out to play. So you get a lot more bang for your buck, essentially, with those. Um, happy, recommend all those. So the two super, Aldi and Lidl, Plantation, those three, plantation, that, what was the other one? And I've got a funny feeling that's been the same all the way. I'll have to have a look back, but I think that's been the same. So the next group down, perfectly happy with, just not as good as them. Simple as, you know, they're not terrible, they're not bad, they're just not as good as those six. So um, next group down, we've got number three, Project 173, Master of Malt, own brand. And uh, number 10, that's that, old J. Old J. Right, okay. Uh, and then the next group down, again, you know, if you hadn't had them, you'd be really happy with them. But the fact is, I've had eight better ones than whatever these three are. It's that, it's that simple, all right? Uh, so, uh, number five. One, two, three, four, five. Red leg. And number, that's, that's my number six. Langs. And uh, number nine. <laughs> oh, they're both in the same place. Uh, six, seven... Eight, nine, duppy, duppy spiced, number nine. Uh, and I don't know what I'm left with here then. Number four, one, two, Havana spiced. Um, it's got to be D DMF, number seven, one, two, three, four. DMF, dead man's fingers. I just like, you get pineapple, you get ginger, a little bit. They're just like, mm, um, they're better. It's as simple as that. Um, wow. So the conundrum is, I'm going to do a daiquiri test, but the conundrum is, right, these are way more expensive, but they go a lot further, and they're kind of interesting. Very different, you know, I, I say these are different. You kind of get different tastes there, but I like them all equally. This is really interesting. Right then, my favourite taste test, the daiquiri, it was how I judge all rums, to be fair, on my personal level, I judge them all on a daiquiri. I don't really drink rum and coke too much. I don't drink rum and ginger because you've probably seen the gas. I judge everything by the daiquiri. So for this, I've got, what, six six clearly defined different groups here. I, do, I took the longest over this one. I did exactly the same as what I did in ginger. I kept the two overproof ones to one side, doubled the amount of lemon and sugar, and I used my little blender to one side. Excuse me. Uh, to blend up a daiquiri mix, imagine now the daiquiri, sorry, the gases are getting me to me now. So the daiquiri, I have done um, a six to one ratio. These down here would probably benefit from an eight to one. So eight parts rum, two parts lime, one part sugar. They were just too cloyingly sweet for me as a six to one. So I'm, I'm not writing them off. I'm just saying it's a six to one. And bearing in mind, a lot of you with sweeter tooth would probably go four to one, maybe. And um, for me, even at six to one, they are too sweet. 
Um, so no, I've kind of made it. So as I say, the overproof ones, I did. I can't, as I say, I'm looking down. I can't really see the volumes in here. So hopefully I've, it's a blind taste in that way. But um, I lengthened out the um, the overproofs a bit more. So we're effectively 10, uh, 10 parts to one to try and get that sort of same ABV kind of down just to bring out the flavours. So hopefully that's all works quite well. Standout daiquiri, definitely this one. Head and shoulders, that is a daiquiri I want to drink. Pineapple, lovely. I just want to drink that all day long. And uh, that's nice. Those two, really, really tasty. Lots more spices, lots more different flavours going on there. Really, really like them. You served any of these three up to me, I'd be really, really happy. Uh, it's just these ones down here. They just get a touch too sweet. Uh, for me, th this is bordering on too sweet. I could play about with the ratios, but I'm really happy with them. These down here are just too sweet, and these, you know, the, these these two at the end here, no, I, I I don't want them. I don't want them. Probably even a ten to one is going to be meh with them. Uh, so that's how I've judged it. I say daiquiris are all about different ratios, different sweet. The rums have different amounts of sugar in them. Full stop. So you know, just to do a straight out kind of standard ratio. Yes, does differentiate rums, but then rums have got different amounts of sugar in them. So it's not a true test, but, you know, how many of you are going to faff around to find out whether that's an 8 to one rum, a 10 to one rum, or a 4 to one rum? You're not. You're just going to make a daiquiri, aren't you, whether you like it or not. So uh, without further, any further ado, my favourite out-and-out daiquiri. I have absolutely zero idea. There's a couple of darker ones floating around there, um, but I don't know. We're just going to go for it. Number 11. One, two, eight, nine, ten. Plantat. <laughs> Plantat, wow. It had to be, didn't it? It had to be. You know, I've gone down this rum journey. It's just such well, beautifully balanced. Pineapple, daiquiri. I, honestly, that's just a stunner. Had to be. Had to be. Uh, right, these two. Absolutely love these belters. Lots of going on. Really, really nice. 13. Two, uh, I keep saying two swallows, two drifters from Derwin. And wow, the two overproofs, number 12 as well. That's what I mean. When you do So that's the thing. When you dilute them down even more, they are just kind of, oh. Happy with those. Happy. Right then. So these three, again, equally happy. I just prefer those three. Number four. Havana, Cuban spiced. Interesting. Okay, that's come up in a daiquiri. I would expect that too, to be fair. I would expect that's the area to play in. As I say, it hasn't got the flavours, neat and all that. It's, it's kind of there. But I would expect that to be more of a daiquiri rum. Then take that out of the equation. I would expect that to be the most daiquiri, the best daiquiri rum here. That's what I would expect. So, okay, happy, not bad with that. Uh, number eight is... There, so again, happy with that. And then number one, Casario. There we go, Aldi's Casario, number one. Interesting. So I thought, markably, but that I thought those were markably better than these. Um, so okay, here we go for this one. Number three, Project One Seven Three, Master of Malt, same brand. Number two, Lidl. There we go on that. So that's that. And then we're getting into the realms that really need a lot of work, but potentially would not work at all. Potentially. You've just got to play around. It, they've got to be a lot more run forward than a 621. They really have to. They're just too cloyingly sweet. Uh, artificial tasting, that's all. An 821 might work quite well. That's a live stream sort of thing. 1021 potentially. Um, but I just, it's just, when you get to that kind of ratio, you're like, yeah, the rum's not really working here. So uh, number 10. If that's 11, no, 10, old J. Yeah, so old J there. Um, number That is my number nine, so Duppy share on that one. Again, not happy. Uh, number five, uh, one, two, three, four, red leg, number five, which the bot, I've not mentioned DMF yet. Number six, that's definitely my six, Langs. And this has to be number seven then. Number seven, DMF. 
So summing up then, I'm really, really glad that I did put the overproofs in. Just to clarify again, if you're skipping through to that, the reason why that's still full, I've still got a tiny little bit left in the bottle that was on the back of the bar. So that's why I haven't opened that. But I'm really glad that I did uh, put the overproofs in. Um, I think they've smashed it, absolutely smashed it. You just have to get your calculators out, your little iPhones out and do the maths on them. Because yes, they are more expensive. And uh, that's a smaller bottle as well. That's nearly 40 quid, but they go a lot further. You know, look, I know a lot of you are gonna do a double. You're just gonna do the same amount. So you're just gonna make a cocktail as you would do like a 60 mil, 50 mil double measure and you're gonna do the same as that. But they're not designed for that. They're designed to go stronger, to go further. So as I said at the top, whereas these are kind of 28 shots per bottle, you're probably looking at about 40, if not more. You have to find your ratios for that. But really happy with those. The flavours, the flavours that come out in stronger rums are insane. And that's why a lot of rums, proper decent rums, are 42, 44, 48, 50s, 52 percent. You get all those flavours. So I'm really a big fan of that. To go that step further, I you can tell I've really developed my rum palette now because I I brutally before this video, as I said at the top, I you know, I was I wasn't really expecting to include that because um, I didn't think it would carry, if a pineapple, if you want a pineapple forward drink, I didn't think that would carry through because it's not artificially or naturally flavoured. It is just kind of pineapple infused. It's, pine it's, it's the closest you're ever going to get to a pineapple rum, not a pineapple flavoured rum. Um, but that, yeah, you've got to have it. You've got to have it. But also uh, a big shout out to uh, Hursty's other new one. Really, really love that. I think that scored in the top bracket. Uh, every single time that is delicious we're gonna uh, enjoy playing around with that that's really good um but yeah i think well notable shouts obviously have to go to aldi hopefully they're in shoot in shot aldi and lidl as well uh, let's put them there i'm not sure how that's going to crop in but hopefully that's let's move them to one side basically what i'm saying right let's let's kind of put these down to one side let's group that and that and that and that let's put them there um yeah, let's, let's, let's do it like that. Let's, let's do that order. So, my personal recommendations. One, two, three, four, five, six. These six. 15 quid a bottle. You can't go wrong. Taste-wise, neat-wise, daiquiri-wise, you know, you're getting a lot more out of these. You are getting a lot more, but these really do help the run. Did kind of enjoy that as well in some of them. You know, that came out quite well. Um, these, I really don't think I, I don't think it's worth it I, I, taste them for yourself let me know what you think but generally if you've got access to these I here it, like to be brutally honest I don't think any of those compare to 15 quid Aldi and Lidl I really really don't I'm pretty much assuming they're artificial flavoured but that's kind of what you expect it, there was a reason why my that sort of one in a quite a lot of categories because I can pick the quality, I can pick the taste, the, the difference in taste. Um, and the same goes for them. Um, so, so yeah, I can't, you know, I can't really, there needs to be a big gap there. I can't really sort of split because price wise, they smash it. They are literally, you could, you could get two and a half bottles of those for the price of one of those, but you know, that does go a lot further. But for the daiquiri, alone how i drink my rums that and pretty much those two as well although uh the daiquiri actually i forget i think it was that one wasn't it aldi i don't think lidl i don't think i like lidl's in the daiquiri but so i hope you enjoyed that let me know what you uh let me know what you thought hopefully that helped you probably a really long video but i will see you uh, next time